Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today we're talking about, I don't know, my friend Dao has a problem, D-A-O. He writes on YouTube the following, Hello, Victor. I am Dao from California, and I just started with the business of recruiting in the nutrition industry. In parentheses, it's a network marketing company. I started watching many of your videos for the first three weeks now, and I absolutely love them. Thank you very much, Dow. I appreciate that. I watch at least one a day to keep me motivated. Currently, I'm focusing on building my team. However, many of the people I see have great potential, which I know if I could just get them in, they may even surpass me in business. But, the big but... These people either had a bad experience in this business in their past or are what we call smart asses or know-it-all. Well put, Dow. Someone who is totally ignorant and could not see what I could offer them or someone who believes they're too good for a sales job. So here are my questions for you, Victor. A, are these people worth the pursuit, worth pursuing? B, if yes, how do you tackle this obstacle? C, finally, How much time should I invest in them? Thank you. I hope to hear from you soon. Overcome your fears, comma, Dow. So anyway, I have a lot of friends who are in the network marketing business. And I get the question a lot because, you know, I speak to a lot of network marketing groups. um, And the question is always, you know, Victor, one is how do I grow my team? But the one I often get on the side is, you know, is network marketing legitimate? And the answer is yes, like any other company, they're legitimate companies. I mean, these are companies that are selling a product. So as opposed to you going to, let's say, CVS to buy products off the shelf, maybe some nutritional supplements, you'll buy them from your friend. And guess what? Your friend now makes a little bit of money. And instead of giving it to the big corporations, you can give it to you know, your friend and let them make a little bit of money. So, you know, network marketing companies, like anything in business, right? There's good businesses and there are bad businesses. Network marketing is a good business when it's run the right way. And I've met many network marketing company executives who run their businesses the right way, where they really like to share their profits, really like to see people not only get healthy, wealthy, and wise, but also really provide a lifestyle for themselves by giving them an opportunity to sell a product that's already been created, the marketing collateral is all there. So all they have to do is build a team. So again, when it comes to network marketing, my stance is analyze the company, make sure they have great management, make sure they have great product, and make sure they have a great compensation plan. That Those are the three things you need to look at. So in Dow's case, he's having to deal with the, the negative connotations or stereotypes of what network marketing is. A lot of people have had bad experiences. You can't deny that. People have had bad experiences with network marketing company, and that's something you can't deny. So, Dow, here's how I want to break it down for you, and hopefully this will help at least your mindset, right? When you're looking at the nutrition industry or any industry in general and you're trying to sell, I always like to use the 20-60-20 rule that I came up with. 20% of the people will never buy from you. These are probably the smart asses, as you put it, and the know-it-alls. They'll never buy from you. Then, on the other end, there's 20% who, if you present the, you know, the proposal, what network marketing is, the upsides, you know, what's going to be required, so forth and so on, they're in. They're like, yeah, I want to do this. And right in the middle is a 60%. These are people who want to find something new, who what I call are complacent, but they need a compelling reason to actually take action. So... The bottom 20% will never buy from you. 20% of the people will never buy from you, Dow. And the faster you can identify these people, that's it. Just push them off your list. You don't want to follow up. You don't want to try to capture them. Uh, Again, you know them when you talk to them. These are people like, oh, this will never work. I heard it sucks. And you know, so forth and so on. They'll just go on and on. And these are people you want to eliminate quickly. 
Then at the other extreme, there are 20% of the people who, if you present this properly, they'll buy in. But the big piece of business, you know, in terms of recruiting is the 60% in the middle. These are people who are looking for opportunities to make more money or get healthy. Again, you think about the, the, the network marketing business in typical, in the typical cases, you're going to find people who want to what, make more money. There are people who want to get well, right? And there's people who maybe want to work on their weight. So again, these companies, your company can help these people make money, lose weight and be healthy, right? Wellness. So right now, what you need to do as soon as you highlight, identify somebody who is just negative, a know-it-all, or basically just, just negative in general, move on. You're not going to change their mind. I can go into the psychology of it all, but guess what? You're not going to change their mind. So my thing to you is move on. What I would focus on are those people who are unsure. These are the people I would try to recruit. These are people who goes, you know, I, I've heard about network marketing. Uh, you know, I guess you can make money of it. I know some people who have, but I know a lot of people, who, you know, haven't. But, but they're open, at least open to listening to what you have to say. And if you can provide a compelling argument, reasons for them to do it, proof that money can be made, maybe even a training program that you offer them, or when you recruit them, you show them how you're going to help them get going in the business. This is what people want to hear. So your second question or second part of the question was, how much time should I invest in them? Well, again, if you're going to go prospecting for or recruiting, you know, we always start with an opportunity meeting, right? For those of you who are not in network marketing, an opportunity meeting is basically you invite people to hear about this opportunity. It could be at somebody's house or it could be some type of, I don't know, some conference room where people are invited in. And during that opportunity meeting, you're going to present your network marketing ideas. Now, you're going to get people who are interested. Let's say you have 100 people in the room, Dow, and let's say 20 people are interested, right? 20% of the room are interested. So you take those 20 people and then the next thing you do is you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one with them and you have a sit down with them. Now that sit down one-on-one -on -one is critical, crucial because that's probably the best opportunity to close the deal right there and then. And what I would do, Dow, is I would analyze if I sit down with somebody and I'm not, and I'm not able to close them, in other words, get them to commit to moving forward, I would have to ask myself, what am I doing wrong during that presentation? So maybe if you're not getting commitment after the one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, if it's a couple meeting, then maybe there's something wrong with your presentation. There's something you're not doing right. Again, when I work with companies, it's the same thing. There's something not right in the presentation. There's something you're not tapping into. There's something you're not doing to reduce their resistance. There's things you're doing in there that actually scare them off. So I would look at what what is my sit down presentation to close ratio? And if it's very low, you need to really look at your presentation. In terms of follow up, let's say you can't close the deal right now, then you have to define your own rule of, rules of engagement. Uh, may I suggest the following is that you try to meet with them one more time and then maybe follow up with a voicemail, follow up with an email, and maybe do two or three of those follow ups and then that's it. You move on to the next. That's what I would do. I would create rules of engagement. And the reason it's important to do that is because once you understand the rules of engagement, when you got to cut it off, you it, if for some reason your brain feels more at ease. If I know that I'm trying to close you, Dow, and I know I've met with you, I've sat down with you, I didn't close you, but I followed up with a voicemail, I followed up with an email, and then I'm going to follow up with one more voicemail and I tell myself that's it and then I move on. This allows you to get closure on a customer or a potential customer. Some people just like to keep calling, keep sending emails, like if they're going to change their mind. Look, if in a week, if less than that, let's know, within 24 hours, if you didn't close the deal, within 24 hours, maybe 48, but 24 hours, if they didn't make a decision, they're not going to do it. They're simply not going to do it. Something in your presentation failed. You didn't close them. Something you didn't touch on. Maybe you didn't reduce the resistance enough. You didn't answer the questions about the company. You didn't talk enough about compensation plan. Maybe they don't like to be in sales and you didn't sell them on the idea that it really isn't about selling. It's about sharing great information and great products with people. Whatever the case may be, something in your presentation is totally off. So my answer to you is 
For those who are negative, let them go. Clear them off the table as soon as you can. For those who are potential buyers who are interested, who lean forward and show some interest, make sure your presentation is a great presentation. It's a closing one when you sit down with them and you talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Donald, I hope that helps. Well, that's it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Let me know what you think. I greatly appreciate it. Love the comments. Also, check out my sales training website, SeminarsOnSelling.com, where you'll find great training videos for you or your team to help you grow your business. Lastly, I want to thank you for listening. This is Victor Antonio always reminding you, sellegate hard when you know how. Take care. Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.